Yeah. All right. Did you have any questions before we got started? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. All right. Hi, Max. Hello. Thank you for joining me. I've got Thanks Max. Thanks for having me. I've got Max Cutler here. I found Max online. This is actually the first time Max and I are meeting. Yeah. Uh, my business coach, Anastasia Edwards, sent me your website as an example of a good website with type specific material, excellent marketing materials. And I reached out to Max because I was wondering about who designed his website or what did he use? Did he use Wix or Squarespace or what was the deal? Max responded and gave me a really nice overview. And then I got to see his email signature, which was even better than I could have ever imagined. It was really good. And I actually took screenshots. So I will be probably posting that like over top of the video here. So that they can figure out how your coach got my website. No, I haven't asked yet. I'm going to. I can let you know, or I can probably write it in the in the description down below. I forgot to ask, but yeah, your even your email signature looked great. So I was like, "Wow, I should see if this guy's willing to talk to me." So here we yeah. are, Max. It's great to meet you. Will you please tell me about yourself? Where are you from? What do you do? So I am from uh, Beverly Hills, California, nine zero two one one, super close, and. Um, I didn't like always want to be an actor. I never, I didn't have like big dreams as a kid. I just kind of existed. And then when I went off to college in Indiana, I founded a, a, um, an improv troupe with a guy. And cause I had been auditioning for the other troops. Cause I was like, I like whose line is it anyway? Let's try this. And he was like, let's, let's make our own thing. And we did that. We had shows every week for three years. I would come home to LA take Groundlings classes, teach everyone what I learned to make us better. And then, but then I got a degree in informatics, which is like computer stuff. I don't use it, but it's computer stuff. In a and sense you do, when we show their, your website, they'll be able to see, hmm, there's a through line here of something true. technology related, something techie. Very true. The, the, the way I put it, when people are like, what does that mean? Can you like build a computer? And I'm like, kind of. Or they're like, can you, can you do, you know, IT and, and fix my stuff? And I'm like, not really, but I know that I can figure it out better than you can. So just, so just give it to me and I'll, I'll fidget with it. And I might be able to figure it out better, better than you. But, um, but, you know, I came home and I was like, I want to be an improviser. And then I was like, that's not sustainable. I'll do acting too. And so that's the, that's the long and short of it. That's brilliant. Okay. Wonderful. And so you you told me you're you're in LA now then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Major market. And what is your day to day now? Are you a working actor? Do you have a day job? You're obviously not doing computer stuff for money. I don't I don't have a day job, much to my mom's displeasure. (laughs) Um, but I do I do have a a sort of passive income setup going on with my with my family. So I try to, you know, take advantage of that and not and not stress myself too much with, um, you know, cause I know how stressful like waiter jobs and other, other kind of actor jobs are. Cause they want you to be there all the time and, and all that. Um, there is that there is physically oh, yeah. showing up to work, right? Even now, even now. And so sometimes I feel, I feel a bit spoiled, um, or, or privileged and it's probably true, but I try not to let it get to me. Um, or, 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 you know, mess with my relationships with other people. Um, so, so my day to day is, is, a you know, auditioning when I got them studying, um, right now I'm like looking for classes to take mostly voiceover. Um, and, and just kind of, t- you know, I'm like, a, I'm like a stay at home husband in a way. Excellent. <laughs> and so you're, you're so rare, like, I mean, the way everybody comes into acting seems to be very unique. I don't think I've heard one story twice, yeah. but but for you to be so nonchalant about how you got into it and then to have the perfect marketing package, something occurred. So <laughs> returning to LA to do improv and now. So please tell me, what's the deal? 
So in terms of like marketing stuff, the first encounter I had with help. Um, so my, my first headshot shoot was with just a friend of mine from high school that took photos. So I used like two of those. And then I made a friend and his mom sent him to this class. I made a friend at the Groundlings. And his mom had sent him to this commercial class with this lady named Jill Alexander. I don't know if she teaches anymore. Um, you might recognize her from Mad Men. She's one of the, I believe, secretaries. She's got short red hair. Okay. Um, so she was teaching this commercial class. And I was like, sure, I'll take a commercial class. I go on commercial auditions. And, and the class was great. And she offered this agent hunter program where she would help you get a commercial agent. Hmm. And you'd pay her and she would like, do you need new headshots? If you need new headshots, I'm going to help you pick your wardrobe and pick your, pick your, you know, what this look and this look and this look is. And then um, when you get the headshots, send all of them to me and I will pick them for you. And there was this whole process. She gave me advice on going to meetings. She gave me a whole like address list and she was like physically send mail to these people and email these people. This was in like 2012 maybe you need meetings with agents yeah meetings with commercial agents so oh yeah you had asked me in the email about how the market works and at the very least in LA you have a commercial agent and a theatrical agent and theatrical in LA stands for tv and film mm -hmm. and I assume theater but there isn't really that much theater in LA That's um, and then yeah and then commercials are just commercials and then your manager deals with all of it so I don't know in New York if the naming or on the East Coast or anywhere else if the naming convention is different. So she was just focused on commercial agents because out here, they're kind of the easier agent to get because all you need is a good headshot. They okay. don't need a real, they want to know you're in classes and like improv is very, very sought out, out uh, uh, for commercials because, you know, commercial dialogue can be a bit clunky and you have to like shoehorn in stuff that normal people might not say. <laughs> and so if you can improvise, you can make that sound good or like add a little, a little something to it. Button, a little something. Yeah. Or just a little like, ins you know, you have to say the catchphrase as it is, but you might add a little something. Um, and so she helped me with that. So I had like a lot of help. I'm, I think a lot of the like through line of my journey is someone else just being like, do this. And I go, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think so, you give, I'm thinking you're not giving yourself enough credit, but um, I think I, I give myself credit like during like I do it and I do it as as good as I can and I try, but I'm not often one to like seek out. I didn't seek out this Jill Valentine person. My friend was just like, hey, this is a good class. <laughs> and I went, oh, sure. <laughs> and so the sort of in the impulse, like I'm not going off and doing a bunch of research. Oh, this is the best class to do. I don't know. It's all recommendations and just trusting my friends and trusting people I know. And then like I research it once they tell me. I, right. go, ah, I don't know about this. But, That's interesting. You must be a very go with the flow. Oh yeah. Open, up for anything individual. Generally. Sounds There's like a few that. like, I'm not going to go bungee jumping anytime soon, but I'm okay. pretty go okay. with the flow. <laughs> okay. Duly noted. Interesting. So was it Jill then that helped you identify these very specific types? That was the start of it. So when she pointed out the three looks that she wanted me to be like my main headshots, she labeled them. She's like, this is your like sitcom guy. You know, you're just your, your, your dude, your normal casual guy. This is your, she called it the man boy gamer. It's like my nerdier, my nerdier thing. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm totally a gamer. So like I fit all, you know, in the techie stuff. Oh and then God. she said, this one was your, what was the name of that last one? I think it was just like, you know, intern. I think it was like my, my shirt and tie like a like professional business guy. Type. Yeah. And since I was like 24 at the time, I wasn't doing like full on suit CEO and I don't have enough of a lawyery, like I'm Jewish, but I don't have a lawyery vibe um, sure. for like TV. And so that was my first like hone in on some branding stuff. And she didn't even 
like use the word branding. So I was just like, oh yeah, I'm a gamer. I'm the new guy at the office. I'm the Ross slash Chandler. That makes sense. Yeah. And so then I went with that for a while. Oh, can I just say one thing? And yes. that is based purely off of your look when people, oh my God, look at your cup. <laughs> awesome. Um, and that is based purely off of your physicality, just how you look, how you move, um, just like initial impression, not even, maybe you, what, if you weren't even into games, you would still I just have the have yeah. this vibe, right? Which I think is Im important to note because I think some people get hung up in what they actually are, like really nice, sweet guys actually looking like villains, for example. Oh, yeah. Or somebody who wants to be the villain who just is that sweet girl next door, like what you want to be and who you feel like you are doesn't necessarily match your physicality and your yeah. how people perceive you. So that's what I've been told at least is that it's very important to um, really dial down on those perceptions. Your, your self image, and yeah. And with it, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, so you had the three types. Don't let me interrupt oh, you. Oh, that's for fine. I tell people, because uh, I play a lot of like snarky, sarcastic people as well, which I am. But <laughs> I, I tell people, even just in my real life, I go, I'm not mean. I'm just really good at being mean. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like, if you, you know, if you're a kind of cynical, snarky person, just dial it up a little when you're doing it as a character. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that was a, that was like one branding thing. And then uh, that got me with an agency called um, Maverick, M-A-V-R-I-C-K. And I was with them for a good year or two. And then one of their agents moved off uh, and he kind of like took me with him. Long story short, he, he called me, he emailed me. I had a meeting with him. It felt really good. I called the other agent back at the agency. I hope this isn't getting too into the weeds or if the, <laughs> no, this is okay. not supposed to be known. I have no idea. Um, and the, the meeting with the original agent at the, at the agency didn't go as well. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the new guy or the same guy at the new place. <laughs> yeah. So I was with him for a while. And since they were a smaller agency, they were willing to sign on with me theatrically as well. So they started pitching me for, for TV and movies and stuff, okay. which I didn't, I didn't have. So that was another sort of example of vaguely happening on a, upon a thing. So someone liked me and they liked all my stuff, which was great. And then he was able to use his new position at a new place as leverage to get me more, more representation. Um, so they signed me ac across the board is what we call it out here. Um, so then uh, I was with him for a while and then I visited, uh, I booked a commercial and made a friend on the commercial who's a session runner for commercials. That's okay. the- well, What's a session runner? So that's a guy or a girl, sorry. Um, that's a person who um, works for a casting director and isn't necessarily like a casting director or a casting associate, but they will run the sessions for the commercial auditions. So if you, you know, you get called in, you go into the room, you have your script, they have it written on a big board, and they're the person behind the camera relaying the directions the casting director got from the client, you know, like McDonald's or whoever. And they'll be like, all right, so what they want is it for it to be like grounded and really real it's not too over the top and then they'll be like your reader it's like it's like being a reader for a casting director but they're the only person in the room hmm. okay um so they're your reader they're running the camera they make the tapes and they send them to the casting director to review so he worked at this one casting company which has since closed but he he became a casting director himself now um and he was like oh hey let me let me introduce you to the casting director when you're done because we met on that commercial a few weeks ago. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. And I go in and, and she goes, oh, hey, you look familiar. And I go, oh yeah, I, I come in here and audition all the time. And I've, I've actually booked a thing. It didn't end up airing. And she's like, come in, come in. Who's your agent? And I go, oh, I'm with, I'm with this guy. And she goes, oh, he's great. But you know, if you really want to be going out a lot, you got to be at one of the top, the top 10 commercial agencies in town. And I go, oh, okay. Uh, 
Sh- sure. And she goes, send me all your stuff and I'll, and I'll, I'll send your, I'll send you around. And I was like, all right. Another example of someone just being like, here's some stuff. <laughs> and so I sent her all my stuff and, and she was like, this is great. She sent it off. I went back in there for a different audition. I was like, Hey, was that, was that good? Was it too much in the email? She goes, Oh no, it was great. I pitched you to, to Abrams, but they, they said they already have someone like you and they need, they need five people like you. I don't know what's wrong with them. So I'm going to, I'm going to pitch you to CESD next week. I was like, I've heard of them. Cool. (laughs) Sweet. And so then I met with CESD and signed with them. And that was like five years ago. Um, so it was like the best kind of referral you can get is from a casting director, like yeah, obviously. Absolutely. And so they, they signed me pretty much right away. There, there was a little like overlap with the other company and I had to leave. Um, like I had, I had like booked a commercial right when the, when CESD wanted to sign me. So I was like, I feel like I should stay with my current agency until that's like done. And then, and then I, I, I moved on. Um, and so I've been with CSD for a while. I've, uh, I'm still with them. They're great. They, they, they have like a huge, you know, like 500 person roster. Wow. Um, but I'm just with them commercially. And, and then from there, I was with them for a while. And then someone recommended me this other woman named Buckley Sampson. And she's, she's an actress too, but she's this like brand coach. Like that's a, that's a, one of the, one of the things she does and she came highly recommended from some other people and she'll much like Jill, like I went shopping with her and she was like, buy this, buy this, buy this. These are going to be your audition clothes. Take pictures, send them to me. If you need to return them, it's a 10 day policy. So you're good. And I was like, well, no, if these are good for my headshots, I'll just wear them in my auditions. Even if they're not the ones I use in my headshots. I agree with that. So it, it's really, it was really freeing to have someone sort of tell me what to wear. You could even do it with like a friend who you like trust their fashion sense or something. Because when I went into that next headshot session with her instructions, I was like someone whose job it is to pick clothes and I paid her to do it, told me to wear these clothes and that I look good in them. I have nothing to second guess. I don't have to be like, oh, I should have wore that blue jacket instead of this red one. Oh, I should have wore this tie. What am I doing? Someone already told me it was the correct answer. And even if they were just blowing smoke up my ass. Well, but it worked. <laughs> the value of having having somebody else and having, um, like you say, that approval, I mean, the confidence going in is totally yeah. different from going into a session where you're like, I hope this fits the bill because I've done that too. I mean, I'm sure you've had many headshot sessions at this point, right? And some of them, you know, you can get some really great images that are usable, but others you're like, wow, that blouse really didn't work like I was expecting it was going to. And headshots are weird. They don't, they're not normal pictures. I know everybody says that, but like even just the wardrobe, they're not normal. Like you can wear something pretty or something really sharp for like a portrait or a um an editorial an editorial or just like something what am i thinking of like a like a professional picture you'd put on linkedin or something oh, sure, sure, sure. and you can look great but when it comes to doing a headshot sometimes there's a difference between a good photo and a good headshot it's yeah and it's really difficult to pin down and when i try and like tell my mom for example like we can't wear this because this, she's like, I just don't really see why I'm like, or like why that shirt you're wearing right now is probably too busy. It probably is probably is, but we don't know. Not until we take a picture. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And something like layers I'm told look really, really good. Layers are good. I've got a headshot session coming up. So I'm going to, for my main look, I'm putting together like a layered some layered options, Mm -hmm. but like, I never would have thought of that, you know, or like another thing I was told, um, after my first headshot session in which I wore a turtleneck, I was told, show your neck. They want to see what like this part of you looks like. And I was in this like pastel purple turtleneck sweater. I mean, a turtleneck is 
it's fine. That's a that's a look. That's a thing. A look, I suppose. But for my made headshot, it wasn't. And maybe not main. It didn't quite didn't quite fit the bill. So you learn. It's all a learning process. But yeah. I also totally. say, you know, like a good photographer isn't necessarily good at taking headshots. Like look for a headshot photographer. But then there's also sort of two types of people. If you say you got like a really cheap headshot session and you're really happy about how, how frugal you were about it, you might be like, well, this doesn't even matter. And you might not get a good session because your mind isn't in the right space. That's in the true. same vein, if you do like a really expensive shoot, you could be really nervous that you're going to mess it up and waste that $700. And, and then you mess it up by being so nervous. It's true. Another thing that I didn't know my first at least my first headshot session, if not my second, I think I did better in my second one, but I still didn't quite hit the mark either in this, like holding thoughts in my head. Oh yeah. You know, they, some people go as far to say, have a monologue memorized and say it to yourself in your head. Now that seems like a lot to focus on for me personally in the session, but maybe you have some insight there, just holding something so that your eyes are doing something because you're thinking something. I do. So in the last session I did like two months ago, my managers do, my managers are very hands-on. And so they did like a branding session-y thing with me. And then we had this whole Google doc with instructions and they were like, they were picking the clothes. It was less, it was like less hands-on than with Buckley. Cause I like paid her to do stuff and we did it in like three days. This was like sort of all on me and they were overlooking and being like, oh, we like this. Try that sweater with this shirt or whatever. Um, but they wanted me to hold, uh, they were like, write a character bio for this person. You don't have to memorize it, but like write a little bio for them. So oh. like, I had one guy that was like, everybody's best friend. You know, he's the, he's super fun at the party and he's always, he's always around to help out. And, you know, he's a people pleaser, just quick little, a quick little bio. And then they were like, think of like five to 10 cliches almost that this person might say on any given moment. So I can even, here, let me screen. All right, so this was the look that it ended up being. Um, and so, that's, so it ended, it ended oh, yeah, up being that's two. The same shirt. So that's, so you just sent them a selfie and yeah. great. And there, before there was a whole grid of pictures of of this, you know, he was called the smartest guy, you know, just sometimes like, can you be a little compassionate for once? <laughs> um, so this, it became two looks because it would be a jacket on and a jacket off look and a okay. glasses on and a glasses off look. Um, so his bio, he's like House or Sandra O, oh, Sherlock. He ended up getting molded into, two, there were two characters that it became one, you know, you take the jacket off and he's the new guy at work. Okay. He's less popular, David Tennant-y, you know, and then a bunch of actor, a bunch of actor prototypes, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Zach Braff, Adam Sandler, Justin Long, you know, that all makes sense for me. I totally see the the Finn for sure. Oh, yeah. If I was 20 years You're just years like younger. his older brother. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, and then a few, you know, healthy version, insecure, Monica, slacker, clerk, puppy, soft. Um, unhealthy version, insecure, deadbeat, loser, no friends. I love that. I love that healthy versus unhealthy. Reminds me of um, the sort of like branding essence umbrella mm -hmm. that people talk about with like your different adjectives that you exude, I guess, upon, <laughs> upon perception from other people who don't know you. Um, I've been told like, so you have an adjective, right? And you mm -hmm. technically own the full spectrum. So you could have, say your adjective is smart. On one side of the spectrum, you could be like the expert. Um, my coach, Vince Pisani, talked about this. Like you can be the expert, the smartest person in the room, which is which is which could be a good thing, right? Yeah. But maybe very technical. On the other side, you are like an arrogant know-it-all type so yeah. like for different characters maybe you maybe for the same character you could lean one way or the other or you could lean more into you know what I mean like pull from different parts yeah. of this this and maybe like the healthy it. version gets you a better headshot 
in the in the like suit picture and the unhealthy version works better as the new guy at work that's so interesting so then the quotes here and some of these when i was doing my session i would say them out loud to sort of get me in a mood so like this one you know obviously (laughs) well obviously that's so good Oh, and I'm then, so you know, on the other side, um, oh, okay, I'll get right on that. <laughs> and just That's saying funny. it helps you get into it. And so you don't have to do like a whole monologue because then you're like, oh, this deep dive into this character. You have like 10 things that you say to just quick switch you into this other thing. Brilliant. Did you have this printed out? Did you have these on cards for yourself? So what I actually did on this one is my roommate, who's also an actress, who had taken headshots with this same photographer, um, I printed it out and I gave it to her. And she was kind of like my little assistant. And she would be like, oh, you haven't done a look that that gets you, um, oh, this is interesting. I'll get on that. So do that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I didn't have to like keep looking down at the paper and she would just sort of pitch them at me. And it was nice to have her there because then you have like a friend and your vibe loosens up when a friend is around. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. I feel like the the headshots that I'm about to get, I feel like there's a policy right now because of COVID stuff. Of, yeah. Like I can't have another person, but I feel like. Is there going to be a makeup artist there? There is. You could give her 20 bucks and be like, can you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea that or you know what I've done I I had to do a silent film audition Mm -hmm. and the film ended up not being silent but the audition was a silent thing so what I did because I was supposed to be like reacting to different stuff I and I wanted to do two different takes I like recorded myself saying things like having a conversation with myself um, with like one very specific vibe and then one other very specific vibe. And then I played it and then I just, you know, reacted, did my thing, right. kind of had the conversation and then muted it. So like, that was a right. thing, but I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how, how weirded out the photographer would be if I was just like, yeah, I'm going to, rather than music, we can ditch Spotify. I'll just play this voice recording that I've made off to the side I mean, it's hey man, my session, it's your session, right? <laughs> it's my session. Okay, well, we'll think about that. That can work. They, <laughs> the, my managers also wanted me to like make a music playlist of songs for, for each character. So they they asked me to do that. And I there was part of me that was resistant to even doing the, the quotes, to be honest. But then when I learned that, when they were like, just do like cliches, it doesn't have to be anything too significant. I was like, oh, okay. And the music, I just kind of didn't want to. And so I didn't. And then the photographer was like, do you care what kind of music I play? And I'm like, I do, do, do you, do you. And so for, for the, you know, the music wasn't going to help me too much, to be honest. I'd probably be too, because the music I'd really want to play, uh, I would feel like I'm being judged by my music choices. So I was like, let's just play, you know, safe you know like music you'd hear at like a wedding that everyone likes just right just, well just and play if you were paying attention fine. to your roommate's cues anyways probably weren't even paying attention to the music yeah so so i skipped that part but it was yeah it was this whole extensive thing um which was great and we ended up getting so i did a four look uh shoot but the way this photographer works is if you if you put your glasses on or off, that doesn't count as changing a look. If you take the jacket off, that doesn't count as changing a look. If you take your tie on and off. So I ended up getting like nine looks out of it, technically, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so th- there's ways you can kind of sneak stuff. Um, and, the, you know, it even said wholesale on the website taking a jacket off is not constitute a new look. So don't worry about that. It's kind of if they have to majorly change the lighting, I think seems okay. to be a lot of people's policy. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, are your glasses, do they have glass in the, I almost said the windows in the <laughs> lenses? Do they have lenses? So my, my father is a designer eyewear salesman. 
for a company called Barton Pereira, an offshoot of uh, Oliver Peoples. And so I don't need glasses, but my characters probably would. And so he just gives me frames and I go, can I get frames with, with fake lenses? So I got some fake lenses that are supposedly uh, glare resistant, mm. but most of the time I just take them, I just take them out. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Good to know. Because then you get the lighting, a big, this is like a big square yeah. covering your yeah. eye. Yeah. No good. Um, okay. So you have your types mm -hmm. and you uh, got all really, really specific. How did that, upon reflection, how did figuring out your types um, impact your auditioning, what you went out for? both commercially and theatrically, did you notice a difference once you had very specific marketing materials? So there wasn't too much of a difference in the roles that were coming to me, but I was like connecting with them more. Hmm. The That's first time I think, I'm just remembering now that I had like really encountered branding and it was in that it was in that Jill class, the Jill Alexander class. She gave us an assignment in the commercial thing to was that her? I think it was to create a log line. Was that her? It was around that time. She someone told me we're gonna create a log line for you. In imagine they're making a movie about your life what does the character breakdown of the character that is you look like? Hmm. So I really like that because it, because it honed in on stuff. It could be a neat little paragraph and it didn't have to be, you know, like if you want to really break down a person, you got to write like a novel to really get, to really get someone. And but it was more than some of these things that I say that are like, you're the rebel, you're the, you're the nurturer, you're the, you know, you're the, what's it called? Like the, the, just these like these one word character breakdowns of, of who you are. I thought those were a little diminutive. Like they weren't, they weren't really getting a person, right? And so we had to make this character breakdown. I'm actually going to find mine right now. Uh, I that ended up maker of fun. That's, I think. So where I actually got maker of fun was um, I make fun of people because I'm good at being mean, and um, people would people would say like, "Stop making fun of me," and I would go, "But fun is such a great thing to make." And they would be like, well, you, ah, you're so annoying. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm the, I'm the fun maker. I like that. I'm making, I'm making fun. Okay. I like um, that, and so, that on your website. And I hope you'll show us your website. Maybe oh, walk yeah. us through it as well, as well as those headshots. Oh, yes. I will do that. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. So this one up here is mine. And so it's a nice little paragraph. It's more than just like nerdy guy. King of the and, nerds. Right? So she, she, this was from Jill. When she told us to do it, there was kind of a formula of it. It would be two, two sort of major character things. And that's the stuff in all caps. King of the nerds, anyone and everyone's awkward wingman. That was me. I don't know. I was probably like 25. Okay. And then you put an age range, 20 to 20, 20, 26 at the time. Then it was always just three sort of adjectives, weird, witty, quick. Um, then you go into little sentences and my favorite thing to do with them were contradictions. Okay. So I'll just read it aloud if the audience at home can't read it. So depending on the situation has to mentally block himself from making jokes, lover of puns, detail junkie, can generally fix a computer issue simply by walking into the room. As an LA native, an expert in all of the deliciously crappy food joints, has never had a sip of alcohol, but consistently manages to be the life of the party, can always be found in a blanket, no matter the temperature, never breaks things, but others are always worried he might. 
<laughs> and then at the end, it would do a likes and a dislike. So at the time, it was likes, video games, voices, noises, and candy, dislikes, indecisiveness, lateness, and lying. And then these two last things that I just added, devil's advocate never burns out on doing improv. Wow. I love it. I love it. And I just, you know, I don't know you very well, but... <laughs> The like a never breaks things, but others are always worried that he might, you know, if you're that like goofy guy, you kind of have that, I don't oh, know, yeah. because of cartoons and just like that kind of, that kind of physicality we're used to watching, or at least those of us who grew up watching cartoons, you know, saw is just like, yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah, so I can often. Totally see it. But the fact that you're this meticulous detail oriented, never late, um, very on the ball person, but that's not necessarily what people's initial yeah. reaction is. I love that. It's on, it's, that's like money right there. And so <laughs> like, so often I'll be in a place and there'll be like four people and the person will be showing us around. They'll be like, Max, that's, that's an expensive breakable thing. And I'm like, why are you sending <laughs> me out? I didn't do anything. Um, Brilliant. And so when, when she gave us this assignment, so the, these other four or five here are friends of mine from an, from an acting class and we kind of made them together with them. Um, but when I made mine, I had to like sit alone and do it myself. And I was like, how am I gonna come up with this? And one, one piece of advice she gave us for it was, think of things that people have told you about yourself that aren't necessarily the things that you're like, oh, well, yeah. Duh, you know, because you already know those. Yeah. But also not the things that you're like, oh, no, no. Think of the things that people go, they say a thing to you and you go, really? Is that, no, maybe, huh, <laughs> interesting. interesting. Huh, I don't know. Like those, those things are the things in here, like the breaking stuff. I never think of myself as someone who breaks stuff. And I'm also never someone who thinks of myself as not breaking stuff. But it's something that people have said to me. Right. And so it, it made its way in there. Because, you know, I believe there's like three versions of you. There's the you you see yourself as. The you other people see them, you, you as. And then the combination of those two things. Right. Which probably comes out in your casting. So that's fantastic. Right. So I when I that. made this, I started being more forthcoming with submitting myself because it was it was before I had an agent and and at the time I, I had a job and I was like oh well I should only submit to things that I'm like hyper perfect for because then I don't want to have to like leave work and they you know they want me to be there and da, da, da. so I should only really submit to something I really think I sh I'm able to get and so I was like really picky which is silly and then I made this and I was like wait a minute there's like seven different types of people in this little paragraph. I yeah. can I can play this thing. It's just a version of me without this or plus this. Right. And different so I, I was more open. Into. The what? I said different things you can lean into. Yeah. So I was I was more open to like submitting to things. And so that was that was one of the first times that I was like, oh, this is who I am as an actor. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Would you be willing um, to show some of your headshots and maybe the yes. progression of headshots? Let me get, okay. So my first ever headshots were this one. <laughs> From your friend who takes pictures, huh? From my friend who takes pictures and this one. I still think they're pretty good. They're very old, but I mean, th th this was literally at my high school. Wow. Like this wall is a piece of my high school. Wow. Well, I mean, we can see some character there. Right? There was still something going on. <laughs> then the next session I had, I'm pretty sure was this guy, Dennis Apurgis. So this was the one that I went with Jill. Jill, gave, Jill told me what to wear for this one. Okay. So this was my intern guy. This was show... She focused on commercials and in her email, when she said, here's what your main headshots are, she said, this one is your main theatrical shot, but 
anyway, let's get back to the commercials. Like it was kind of just an extra little thing she decided to tell me. Okay. And then this was my sitcom guy. And that jacket, I don't own that jacket. Dennis had that jacket in a closet. And he was like, here, put this on. <laughs> um, and then this was my like man boy gamer. Man boy gamer. Okay. So Jill picked these for me. So I didn't have to go through the whole process of, of picking. You got to just go in, take your pictures and feel confident. Yeah. Okay. And Jill picked the, Jill picked the pictures and the, the wardrobe. Like I gave her the whole session and she went through it and was like, this is, this is the one you should use. So well, I had even more it, confidence using it. And isn't it interesting, the pictures that our reps choose versus the pictures that we would want to choose or that our mom would want to choose. Well, yeah, your mom. <laughs> um, so that was headshot session two. Okay. Then I... I got some random email, I think, from this guy that was giving out free headshots at Lionfly. And I was like, hey, free headshots. And so that's these three. I did not use them at all. But I picked the wardrobe. This one's similar to the gamer one, just a different color of hoodie. Well, but it was this, an experience. Nonetheless. Yeah. It was like, oh, why not? I don't think I put them on any of the websites. And I was like, let me go for like an evil business guy. You just look fun there. That doesn't look creepy. I think you're too much of a teddy bear. Okay. <laughs> um, and then when I signed with CESD, they suggested that I go see this guy, Greg Crowder. And so that was these shots. So um, these, I think I picked out the wardrobe all myself. I also learned that I had the flu that day after the fact. So I had the flu during my headshot session. Yeah, I can't imagine being sick taking headshots, but we got, we've got a different look going on. We got longer hair. That, yeah, that was, that was part of the newer thing. Um, this one, I think my agents still use sometimes this, this suit guy. And it was, you know, cause it was commercials. It was a little more charactery. Right. Um, so that one, and then CESD. So how many is that? 10? they picked, they were like, give us your whole session and we'll pick the ones we like. Okay. So again, I didn't have to do the picking. Um, I still think I went through them and picked the ones I like, but I was like, well, if my agents were telling me, I'll just defer to that. Okay. Luckily, sort of as a comedic actor, I have a little less like, I don't really care how I look as much, I guess. Maybe it's also a guy thing. Um, so like, hey, if I look dumb in this headshot, it's probably funny. So that's good. Just plays right into your casting of being a bit goofy, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, then I, uh, I needed a new theatrical agent and I needed um, a manager. So I hired Buckley to help me with the uh, with the headshot session, the headshot headshot session, and she um, she told me what to wear, and that's when I went to Morgan Morgan Demeter, um, and he was someone I found on Instagram. Some other friend of mine went to his headshots, and I was like, I like that, and then I just looked up his website. Um, so that was this one and this one. And that one, and there's my headshot in my email signature. Mm -hmm. um, this was my like Adam Driver look. I can see it. He, you also look like moodier there, right? The one you're like, isn't yeah. that one evil looking? And I'm like, no, that one's like playful. This one doesn't have that playful glint in the eye. Yeah, this it's the it's the the leaning forward. Mm, good to know. I. I up pictures of Adam Driver and this was me vaguely copying a cover he did for um I think like Vanity Fair or something it's a magazine okay. um and then this one <laughs> so the way I picked those I think I, so Buckley might have helped picking with these I forget if that was part of her her thing 
but I, I did it myself and I like asked a friend or two to like go through them and pick their favorites. Mm -hmm. And so what I what I would do is I would put, I would like download every photo, put it in a folder. And then I would just kind of, you know, cause there's like 700 photos. I would scroll through them kind of quickly, like not super fast, but just like duh, 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 duh. And if something about it just caught my attention, I would go, I yes, and, too. and put it in another folder. And then a day later, I would go through the, the pared down version. And then I would get a little more slow and selective and be like, this one or this one, that one. And then I would see what overlapped with friends of mine, be like, oh, you chose 972 instead of 974. I like 974 or whatever. Um, and then we just kind of pared it down to, what is that, eight? Six? Yeah, six. Two, two from each kind of look. That was a three look session. Okay. So, so that was the session with Buckley. Um, I'm pretty sure I bought, I bought this whole outfit with her advice. I bought this whole outfit with her advice. Same with this one. Um, I like that outfit. <laughs> but I already had this jacket and I just really wanted to use it in a headshot session. I was like, this is the bluest jacket I've ever seen. I want to use it. I'm just gonna. And she was like, no, I like it. It's great. <laughs> well, and for commercial, I think that color is, is quite common for like uniforms and things like that, right? Like yeah. Shirts. It, it, even though it's not a polo, it um, sort of makes the mind go there. So very good. These are so good. Um, then finally, oh, wait, David there's Muller. more. <laughs> yeah. Then this is David Muller, the last session I did like two months ago. Okay. And my, all my reps were like, give us the whole session and we'll, and we'll pick from it. So I didn't even, like I did my first pass through and I told my managers, I like these. And then they were like, well, let's see what the agents say. And they're like, give us everything. We'll pick them. And I was like, all right, whatever. So then I stopped my process there. Um, my commercial agents picked, I believe, how many are there total? 17. So I think they picked like 10 photos for me to put up on, on websites. And, and my theatrical agents at DDO picked like eight. And there were two that overlapped, two that were exactly the same between the two agencies. So I was like, that's interesting. And then my managers picked one more that they were like, can you put this one up too? And I was like, all right. So it ended up being 17 because 10 plus 10 plus eight minus two plus one. Wow. Um, so these are, um, I don't remember, I, I, you know, since I've renamed them, I don't remember which ones came from which agency. Okay. Um, but these two, I think this one was from commercials. Um, I was kind of going for like a taxi driver guy kind of vibe, just like a scary fringy kind of guy. Definitely get a fringe vibe there. Right. And then this was just my like Nick from new girl. Yeah. Um, then, uh, yeah, that's very Nick. And, um, I think the, the previous one, the one before that reminds me of a character. <sighs> I just, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm thinking of, but it's like this, this really like nerdy, like kind of dorky guy. And he's got these, I don't know. He's got these square glasses and he's like eating like Cheetos or something. I don't Is know. Is it from the it crowd, that British show? <sighs> no, but whenever I see it next, I'm going to think of it and I'm going to tell you. Okay. But it, it's good. It's like a really great character -y, um this one I right definitely see you doing that one in the in the last one i think right and the one before that yeah just all of is, those like that face that face just makes me think like i don't know oh well, you know what i think of it later <laughs> i'll send it um, to you where it is this one they called my like dad off the wagon or european hitman i can definitely see more european with like the long hair but like the tidy sweater Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can maybe th maybe this was dad with it unzipped is more just some dad. That could be young dad. I feel like this yeah. young dad, young mom thing is quite is quite a is quite a weird category because it's like I do I look like a young mom? 
I mean, I does that just mean I look mom, tired? But do I look right? I'm like, do I look like like the society stereotype of a young mom? Like, what is the stere- society's stereotype of a young mom? Like, I feel like Someone a young, young, young mom is still younger than or is still like older, like looking, like still, you know what I mean? Just like definitely a mom, right? I I guess. Hmm. I don't really know. I don't I never whenever they say mom, I'm like, that's that's like a being a mom or not is just a fact. It doesn't, mm-hmm. it's not like how you are, sort of. I don't know. Um, forgot who liked that one. Um, then this was that CEO guy that I showed you from the from the document. Um, and then <laughs> this is intern guy. These I, were, I, I thought it was interesting that I think it was two different agents wanted these separate looks just glasses huh. or no that were almost the same face Interesting. um this is the it guy who's like have you tried turning it off and on again <laughs> which was yeah, one of his cliches. yeah you can totally see it here's another kind of taxi driver guy sort of a punky punky vibe um there he's a little crazy i can't unsee adam driver now <laughs> I get, I get him a lot. I actually played Adam Dr- I played Kylo Ren in a web series. Wow. Um, and so I'm already, I'm already on that train. That's cool. <laughs> That's super cool. Well, but you're going to make a name for yourself separate, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So my next question is going on to footage then, because I've watched okay. a whole bunch of your footage on your website and I'm just like, why is it perfect? Okay, what is that box? What box? That gray box. This gray box? Yeah. That's us. Oh. <laughs> That's the Zoom oh, call. Weird. Oh, oh, okay. Because it, it's like a box. Like, it's just nothing. It's just like a box. I think it's the way that screen share and Zoom and recording, I don't know. Is it? it okay. It's good over here, I think. Okay, yeah. It's not, it's not in the way. It's just like, I've been wondering, what is that? I can make it small and then I'll stop looking at myself. Don't worry. Is that better? Sure. Thank you. So okay. this is what uh, Anastasia, or I call her, Anas- her name's Russian. I call her Anastasia because that's how okay. it is in Russian. Anastasia, Anastasia sent me this and it's like to show me all these different types. And I see you've got best friend, snarky techie, the weird one. And so you've got these six types. And, mm. but if you scroll up for just a second, cause I'd love for you to show us individual ones. Um, you know, going to real, then you get like the reels going to headshots. You get all of the headshots, you know, not just six. Yeah, totally. That, so that's what I need. What I told you in the email that I need to update. I need to delete a few of these photos and okay. put in the new ones. Okay. I was curious when, when I said, I love your website and you said, um, I need to update. I'm like, with what? <laughs> okay. That yeah, makes just sense. materials. So not like, I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to swap out headshots and maybe like I have a voiceover reel now so I can put that in my in my reels page oh yeah that would be cool that would be cool and then there's resume which I if I recall correctly goes straight to actors access it does right here it is pretending to load yeah (laughs) yeah I notice you don't have um slate shots is that because you have so many so much nice footage I suppose you don't really need so I always kind of thought slate shots were creepy um, I went oh, definitely, to, definitely. I, went, I went to a casting director workshop and they someone asked them about about slate shots and they were like oh is that that thing where sometimes if I like mouse over your headshot it starts playing a video I hate that and I go oh okay never mind <laughs> um, and then I asked you know I asked my reps I was like do I need a slate shot and they're like eh if you wanna and i was like not really and they're like don't bother solid i think so, choice, as far as i can tell it's a choice if you don't have footage that you want to submit to stuff like at least that'll supposedly bump you up to the at least partially middle i actually did a test with that did you what was the result so i did a casting director workshop and he whoever it was, i don't remember who it was but he told us i'm actually casting something right now and I've got, I don't know, 500 submissions in here. 
I haven't looked at it or touched it at all yet. And I was like, ooh, can I ask you to do something for me? And he goes, what? And I go, so I hear that if you have a reel or if you have a slate shot, it like puts you all the way to the top. And he goes, okay, I usually reorganize it anyway before I even start looking at anything. I reorganize it by like date or name or something. Cause he's like, cause I go, I, lo- I watch everything and I go, okay. And you haven't reorganized it yet. Right. And he goes, no. And I go, can you, before you reorganize it, look at it and see if there's any, like all the people that are first have reels or all the people that are first have headshots or have slate shots or whatever. And he said, yeah, I could do that for you. I'll let you know. Cause it was a two-parter class. He's like, I'll let you know next week. I go, perfect. And he said, there was no rhyme or reason to it. It was just based on who, you know, when they submitted. Wow. That is very good to know. But I think he said, so all these submissions were from agents. We didn't have this open to the public as it were on like actors access. And I go, oh, maybe on the things where you can self-submit, having those things will give you an advantage. But if you have an agent doing it for you, it's just, it's just what it is. I kind of like that though, that it levels the playing field when it's like multiple agents submitting. Well, yeah, with agents, I like that it levels the playing field. I don't like that. It's like, well, if you can spend an extra $5 per headshot, you get a better thing. It makes it pay to play. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot going on with like the casting networks right now as yeah. I'm sure where petitions being signed and everything else. But um, let's uh, let's come back to the website. So yes. then let's go to each one of these types. And how did you, so the, you just, from all the branding, for lack of a better word, that we've been talking about with these types, that's how you pulled out these different ones, right? And we were like, okay, I'm going to use that language, use your log line per, per guy. Mm-hmm. Right? So it was kind of a two-pronged approach, if I recall what I did. So a few of my first reels, I edited myself. Um, And what I would do... You had done, um, like, um, from, like, backstage or friends or, like, where did you get that footage from? So a class I was in a long time ago that I'm not even sure if it's a real class anymore. Um, The sound is getting weird. Um, we would shoot real scenes in class. Okay. And the only, oh, weird. I'm getting like a weird feedback. Oh. I think it's gone. Um, so I have a few clips from that class, like real shoots, but most of them were monologues. And so they were always kind of awkward. So there were a few that we did as scenes where we would shoot one person and we would shoot, like, everyone would be either person A or B, right? And we would shoot all the A's in a row with the same background. And then we would turn the whole room around and shoot all the B's so that you would have, like, a scene. Yeah. And, you know, because it was a class, there was, like, 20 of us. And so I, I used one or two of those scenes in some of my reels. But most of my real stuff, and definitely most of it now, is from student films or web series or uh pretty much things that i've i've booked i never i never really like called up a friend to shoot a scene but there's nothing wrong with that that's just nothing i had ever done um or or you can um there are those real shooting companies but you really got to like do your research because some of them are kind of kind of awkward and expensive yeah um I'm a little skeptical myself but like i don't even remember what's in this one so that's from a web series. That's uh, so this clip. That's from a web series. This clip with me and this dude. Uh, that's from that class. Okay. That's from web series. Web series. That's from a commercial I did. It's like a that's from the Kylo Ren club. web series. It's like a reel for the best friend. Yeah, it's a mini reel, like a minute or a minute and a half long. That's a commercial. Um. Uh. But, because one, one thing that, that that one class where we would shoot the reels, he taught us was a good idea if you don't have a lot of footage, is make a sizzle reel. Make a reel that is less than one minute of just like 
you talking, you, 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 you. And then once you get bigger things, you want to have scenes to show that you can like do scenes. Um, and so some, and so I was just like, let me make little sizzle reels for these characters. And for some of them, I was just like, oh, this clip is so good. I don't care that it makes it longer than a minute. I want to use it. I love the one where it was like the office and they were talking about, I don't even know what they were talking about, but the guy was, your guy was like trying to like, I don't know if it was the word, it wasn't the word nerdy. It was like quirky or something. I don't know, but whatever that was, like I wanted to watch that. I didn't, I don't know. Quirky. I thought it was. You know which one it's in? It was like an office type scene, I think. Did I have a beard at some point? Was I flirting with a girl? I don't know. I don't know. But um Oh, this one? No. <laughs> it was like I thought I feel like it was that one. This yeah, one? It was that one. Yeah, that's the that's the one where I flirt with the girl and then I grow a beard real fast. Oh, okay. So that's a that's a commercial for a mint commer uh, a mint Oh, maybe it wasn't that one. That one doesn't look familiar. Whatever it was, I just remember watching a few of these and being like, wow, these are so specific. And it's like, wow, everything is all your ducks are in a row, Max. So this was all stuff that I had. And so what I did is I looked at the headshots I had and kind of the caricatures that they are. And... Um, you know, and I kind of, I kind of made lists. I was like, all right, I got to have some best friendy stuff. I got to have some techie stuff. Maybe I have some villainy stuff. And some of the reels are longer than others. And then I just watched all of my footage, which I have videos for real. So this is as much as I could, could get on my own, just like downloading from YouTube, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's more in here than when I made, whenever I made those reels. But so I look through all this stuff and I would be like, all right, I'm in best friend mode right now. And, or, you know, I would try to be in everything mode so that I didn't have to watch everything 16 times. Um, but I would watch everything. I was like, oh, this is a good best friend clip. This is a good best friend clip. And I would literally write down everything. Even if I didn't think it was gonna work, maybe. If it, if it kind of worked for best friend, I would write it down. And I would put like, you know, losing it episode two, 17.35 to 21.52. So, you know, that four minute scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's I would awesome. find everything. Put all together. And then put them, yeah, put them in a row on, on a video editing thing. And then just kind of put the best one first, put a nice one in the middle, scooch them around, make sure it was, snor you know, be like, oh, this one, this one's good, but the energy of this one is the same, but better. It's like, this one's a friend giving advice and this one's a friend giving advice, but I like this one better. So I just didn't use the other one. Fair enough. And I think, I think that's what they mean by range mm -hmm. is like, they don't mean like, make sure in the scene that you go from crying to yelling to screaming to, you know, or like that you have one clip where you're crying and one clip where you're, you're whatever. It's just like all of the vibes that you can do don't repeat them and that'll make it look like you have range interesting well i love i love the format of your website i love the simplicity of it um yeah i am definitely going to be modeling <laughs> remodeling mm -hmm. my website after after this you know really getting the branding in there and with your background my boyfriend was like i showed it to him and he's like oh that's Shoot, I'm going to misname it now. Minecraft? Minecraft. So it, it isn't, but it, but it makes you think of it. Right? I just, I think I just Googled something like green, green background, right? I just Googled green background. And then I found something that looked kind of video gamey. And then just like, I think I added, you can see like a little vignette around it like some shadows, and then I just blew it up super huge. Okay, I like the vignette. Yeah, I like that. When you you gave me the website for that font thingy. So oh yeah, DeFont. Somebody wants, I'm assuming they've got more than one font on there. Oh yeah, and they, it like tells you the licenses you're allowed to use it for and whatever. 
Um, so like, as you can see here, like I can highlight this because the website knows that it's text, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, interesting. But I can't, I can't highlight these. Huh. The, the, the real and the headshot and media, these are not text. Right. These are pictures right. of text. I don't know how you got that. I might be emailing you. So in Wix, you can just, so what I did is I typed out the word real in Photoshop. Then I filled in the, the blank middle parts with white because I knew it was see-through, you know. Then, and I needed to make sure they were PNGs so that there wouldn't be a square around it. That's a image format yeah, thing. Um, it, it's just a thing. And so, um, and then I saved the word real, just like with the borders straight around it as a JPEG, a photo. And then I, I colored it into purple um, and saved another one. And then in Wix, I uploaded the photo of the word real and then made it a link that links to the reels page. Uh -huh. And then in the Wix settings, you can be like mouse over. And then in mouse over, I said, slow shift to this other photo of the same picture, but the, where the white is purple. Wow. That's awesome. Cool. And so, yeah, like most of this isn't even, isn't even text. Oh, interesting. Good to know. Cause like I've been, I've spent hours like fighting with Wix being just like upset that I can't hack it. <laughs> so I just deleted the whole template, whatever, it, you know, it made me pick one and I just deleted it because I'm like, I'm a PC. I'm like a big, I'm a techie. And so when, when you're using a toolbar, you have less control, you know? Oh, like the tools that they provide. I forgot that you were just saying that with the toolbar, you have less control. And so that's the toolbar that Wix like offers. Yeah, so like the toolbar that the template gives you, you can only do too much to it. And if you try to do more, it, it, the formatting gets all weird. Like the word might be too big and then it puts it in two boxes or it makes that box bigger. And now half of your boxes are different sizes. I have fought with that thing. And I just, I'm too proud to like yeah. pay somebody to do it for me. I'm like, I will figure this out. It's, it's like when you, it's like when you um, try to put a photo into a Word document. Okay. Have you ever tried to do that? Yeah. And yeah. it's a nightmare. That thing with the dogs, you know, <laughs> the, like wrap text or whatever it is. Yeah. I always, I'm like, it's the one with the dog. So what I did is I deleted the template. I was just like background, green picture. And then here, actually, let me even see if I can. Yeah, I'm just making you. See if I can like log into my Wix and show you the edit thing. This is golden. Uh, dude. While you do, would you mind enlightening us on the value of having your own website? Because when I first started, they're like, yeah, you don't need your own website. You can just have like your profile or whatever on your agent's websites. But I've always been drawn to having my own space. So, so I don't even know how useful it has been, to be honest. Do you ever look at the analytics, like the traffic? Never. I, I, I use it. Upon it. I've stumbled upon it. I use it as a, um, what's it called? I just use it as a business card. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't know. It makes me feel good. Cause it makes me feel like I have some amount of control over, mm -hmm. you know, cause like certain agents like these pictures and not these pictures. And some people will put your age on there and I, you know, or like insist upon having weight on there. And while I'm not like a huge, like I'm, I'm not like, I don't care that much right. I care enough on principle to think that having an actor, especially an actress's weight on there, that doesn't- When I, I looked at your resume and I was like, there's a lot of extra info in here. Yeah, yeah. I put a lot <laughs> like special skills. I put, you know, I put lots of stuff, but I don't put my weight because I don't think yeah, don't. that matters. It doesn't. So no, that's ridiculous. Uh, though, Someone did contact me through my website once. Couldn't get a hold of my agent. Hold out for a second. You said someone did contact contact you through your website once. 
Oh yeah, so they, they, it was a production company and they were renewing a commercial I was on. And they couldn't get a hold of my agents, not my current agents, my old, old agents. No one was like answering the phone. And so they were like, we need to pay you again because we're renewing your commercial and no one's answering. And so that was one sign that I needed to leave them, whoever that was at the time. Um, and so they found me through my website because there's other Max Cutlers. And they were like, we hope you're the right one. I think there was this contact page. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that it has been, it has been technically useful. I, yeah, it's like a, it's like a business card that you can tell anyone to, to go to. So if you can see these dotted lines, mm -hmm. I made this top part a header. That means it'll appear on every page of the website, no matter what. Okay. Um, and then this box in the middle is the content of the page. And it, it, it might seem complicated, but it's literally just a photo, some text, or here, I'll use my mouse, a photo, some text, and the photo is a button. Right. And then again and again and again. So how do you have your, so will you show me when you click on one of those pictures, like telling mm -hmm. okay. um, at least on Wix, it's like, I've had trouble like getting like the changing the menu versus like changing what's on the page. It seemed like it was in two different spots. And I was like, why is this not in the same place? Okay. So if I, if I click on the photo, it says here linked, mm -hmm. right? If I click on linked, it says, which page? And it goes to a different, this is the list of pages I have. Right. And your pages looks like it's um, minimized right now, but there's like a list of pages on the side, right? Uh, oh yeah. I'm not sure what you're seeing. Cause maybe Wix's thing is weird. Do you see a, what do you want to link to? Yeah, I, oh. see that. I do see that, but like where did, like where you access the page and how you edit the page. Oh, oh like, the like how do I get to the best friend page? Yeah, that's like off to the side, right? Yeah, that's over here. Um, so that's menus and pages. If I click here, it'll go to best friend and then I can edit best friend. So you can see here still the real headshots media is on the top and the footer is my email address and my buttons to these other things. Right, and those buttons, they have those buttons that you can just add, right? Yeah, so I might've taken them from I think at the time they didn't have as many buttons. So like the IMDB button I took from something else. Okay. Um, but it's just a, you know, it's a photo, it's a JPEG. And I made it a, I made it a link to this, to this link. Yeah. Um, okay. Not bad. Not, not, it seems simple enough. Yeah. It it's just the, it's the, you know, you got to come up with the design of it. And so yeah. for me, since I wanted this to just be like a business card that you could click through, it's just, you know, I uh, originally I didn't have the the whole um, these things. Okay. There was just a, a few headshots here, and then there would be all the headshots, resume, media reels, and stuff. So I added these these little characters because I wanted to. I love it because you're like, ooh, who's that? Click. Ooh, who's the other guy? Click. Please I was click. also worried that people wouldn't know you could click on them. So that's why I made them like turn black and white when you put your mouse over it. Mm, that's um, yeah, how do you do that? I, I don't remember. <laughs> it should be an animation, but it says there's none here. Huh. So well, what did I do? <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't remember. But I did say, I, it's the same thing that I did to like replace it with the, um, the purple, like with the text is it, I think in Wix, I edited the same photo and saved a copy of it that was in the different color vignette thing. And then I made it so that when you, oh yeah, here we go. So you go change icon, regular is the image. And I did this change image and you could, e you could edit images in Wix. And then I saved a copy and then it turns into this black and white one when you hover. Okay, 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 cool. And then I did a, a tool tip, click me. Because as you can see, I don't know if this pops up for you. If, you. if I leave my mouse there, it says click me. Yep. Yeah, that's cute. Wow. Well, that's thank you for the Wix tutorial. No see, problem. I didn't have to hire a web designer to just look at what I need to do. Brilliant. Thank you. 
Um, I now guess I'm going to look at my analytics later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious um, about um, any resources that you would recommend to people. You know, I know a lot of people who are around the same place in their career as I am. Their credits are mostly student films or other independent things. I mean, for those that I know physically here, like we are in a smaller market and that is- Where, where are you? I'm in Ohio. Oh. Not for much longer, but I am in Ohio and it's a lot of commercials. So like our agents tend to be, um, what did you call it? Where it's, they, they have you for a commercial and theatrical? Oh, across the board. Across the board. So that's all we have pretty much. Commercials, yeah. the name of the game mostly local, a few national, um, with some film and TV, um, you know, because of taxes and stuff, like there aren't as many union opportunities here, like hardly at all. Like there aren't even that many like TV film opportunities that are independent, but um, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a stepping stone for a lot of people and which is great. And um, I guess I'm curious if you have any resources you'd recommend any mindset stuff like that's something I made note of earlier oh. you know? and maybe it comes naturally to you but if you wouldn't mind reflecting upon this sort of nonchalance you have this sort of open possibility open-ended question of like what if like okay I'll take that opportunity why not a lot of people are in their head and they worry so okay yeah I too I too am a worrier but I'm over, I'm sort of over analytical instead. So just, you know, the more information I get, the better, but sometimes I can recognize there's no more information to get until I do it, I guess. Um, so in terms of resources, um, the only sort of countrywide one that I know of, you know, I know everything is in Zoom, so there's classes, but like acting classes or acting classes. Um, uh, and and it's also my theory of how your coach got a hold of my stuff. So uh, I'm in this program. I'm sort of floating in and out of it. Uh, it's called Career Activate, okay. um, where ACT is in all capitals. It's run by a woman named Jonah Zhao, X X I A O, I believe. Okay. Um, and she, it's this whole coaching community. There's like 50 to 100 members at any given time. And if you, you know, you can sign up for the like program where you get a coach, it's like a year long thing. You have a personal coach and they'll help you every, every month or every other week or so. Um, and she has classes and networking tips. And so a lot of, a lot of the things I've done with the branding stuff, and uh, there is a branding thing you do at the beginning of the career activate, you know, when you sign up for the like elite program, um, and she's just full of like great people. Like she, she, she has like turned away people who don't, she's like, I don't think they're not like, I don't think they're going to make it, but like, I think they might be not a nice person. So maybe meh. like she'll kind of vet people. Um, so that, that's been great for like resources and, and strategies and cold calling and emails and all that stuff. Yeah, that um, networking and that like we've been talking about marketing this whole time, but that networking piece, once you have, as I'm told, once you have all your ducks in a row, that networking piece is huge. Part of it is that you got to play the long game with it. And it's it's really hard because you're like, you want to just be like, give me stuff. Yeah. Just like taking that genuine interest in people, the old Dale Carnegie yeah. approach. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hard. That okay. program's super good. And my guess is that your coach took one of Jonah's maybe like free classes. Maybe. And Jonah has used me as an example in her classes because every once in a while, a friend of mine will text me and be like, I took this class and there you were. <laughs> um, and so I'm guessing maybe because if your coach is a coach, maybe she's like learning other coachy things and probably saw me there. That's my, that's my best hypothesis. Dude, um, maybe I need so to ask her. Coaching with her, has been a game changer for me. I tell anybody who will listen to at least talk to her. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know where I'd be. Yeah. I don't know where I'd be without coaching. So it helps. business side is definitely overlooked. Oh, is she an acting coach or a business coach? Acting business coach. Okay, so not a, like she doesn't coach your auditions. Nope. 
Okay. Yeah, that's what. And, and, and my footage and be like, the acting was fine, but it's not on brand for you. We need mm. to get footage that's on brand. So it's like, right. Um, no, she's brilliant. Cause like, I feel like most people focus on the craft as we should. Um, you know, I'm learning all the time, but there's this business side. She, she, ha she mentions multiple pillars. I actually interviewed her as well. She's on the channel already. Um, but multiple pillars like craft mindset, um, marketing, like your package, networking. I feel like, like there was one more, but essentially there's these pieces to building your career and mm. you can't have just craft. No, obviously you can't have, well, people say you can't have just the business side either, but then every now and then somebody will like throw some famous actor under the bus and be like, well, this person's proof that you don't need acting chops. You just need business sense. And like, <sighs> okay. I'm not going to comment because I don't want to. I think it, it, under the bus you need all of them for longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Because you could be terrible in some, you know, your dad can put you in some movie, but if you're bad, it doesn't matter who your dad is anymore. Now people know you're bad. Right. So, um, I forget, will you show us your backlight? Oh, so I'm in my audition setup room. I got some, I got three LEDs up here. Uh, I got this thing and I use, uh, a backlight, uh, what most lighting guys will call a highlight. Okay. And so here's what it looks like off. I'm sort of a similar color tone to the background. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of harder to tell where my hair ends and the background starts. If I turn this on, it's definitely less bright than the front lights, but it lights up the wall. So it gets rid of shadows that there might be. Right. And it gives me a little bit of an outline. And Which is like nice because then I pop out. Mm -hmm. You have a sort of halo going on. Yeah. So then people think I'm Jesus, and that's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and on a lot of, I don't know what the auditions are like out there, but every time we have an audition, there's a big instruction sheet about pull your phone in landscape, and make sure we can hear you, and make sure we can see you. And it says, don't be backlit. That's different than having a backlight. Have you ever oh, zoomed with yeah. someone? Okay, yeah, like how, like, so ha so being backlit means like you have the kitchen light behind you and you're a silhouette versus yeah. having a backlight, which actually helps you stand out. Yeah, like, have you ever been on a Zoom with someone who's sitting in front of a window? Oh my God, it's such a pet peeve. You cannot see them. <laughs> That's being backlit. That's like when it's too much. And so casting directors still have to tell people, hey, you don't do that because we can't see you. Um, it's basically, uh, you know, in, I think, you know, you know, in uncomplicated terms, a backlight is useful as long as it's not stronger than your front lights. Okay. Sometimes highlights are also on the side. Okay. So it'll give you a nice little sheen over here. So that's useful too. I just put it straight behind me. It all does, it all does different things okay. depending on what you want. That makes sense. I know somebody, um, his interview is coming out soon too. Uh, William Mark McCullough. That was a great mm -hmm. interview. He, uh, he talks about really just like playing it up with the lights, making it cinematic, really yeah. just going all out. And so I'm pretty sure Mark probably plays with, with the lights too. But uh, it's also like when you're starting out, don't spend $800 on your lights. You're, you're not, it's not, it's not time. I feel like you'll know when it's time, right? Right. Yeah. When you start looking at your tapes and you're like, something's missing. I should get new lights. I feel like you and I could probably talk for hours just about all kinds of random things. I guess for the sake of the interview, not being five hours. Right. Anything, any other advice, any reflections upon your earlier career? Because um, you've been doing this since at least 2012 right yeah 2010 is when i came home from college so okay so like 12 right 12 years yeah that you know you and you've been through the change in the industries from pre-pandemic to this new world so self tape town yeah like do you i guess do you have any advice that you would give our community um just based on your experience so one thing i encounter a lot when i'm helping people with tapes is they'll, is they'll be like, 
I don't know why they called me in for this. It's obviously a young mother, and I usually play like 22 and 25. They want something older. I don't, and I'm like, they called you in. They called you in. Stop, stop it. Um, um, the way I see it is like, I made this analogy for friends a long time ago when they would, they would be confused about auditions or they'd feel weird being in an audition, like they don't belong or something. And I'm like, I try to treat auditions like I was invited to a party by a friend, but because it's their party, I know I can't hang out with them the whole time. Like they know everybody. I can't bogart their time at this party. They, they're throwing the party. Okay. And all these other people are their friends. So they all belong there. I belong there. I'll make friends with that. So I imagine in the audition, say the casting director's there and there's a casting associate and a session runner. So there's like four people. I imagine that the casting director is the person that invited me or even to make it more dis disassociated of I think that the other casting director that isn't in the room is the one that invited me. So these are all new people that I don't know. They didn't invite me, but someone else did. So I've been invited. I belong here. So, uh, like, I don't, I, I, like I, I get where the insecurity comes from, where you're like, oh, I feel like I don't belong there. They're only, they're only called me because, and then, and then you go, what? They only called you because what? Charity? No. That's really interesting. I love that. And so when you, so do you really do much in-person auditioning nowadays? I know you do a lot of commercial stuff. It's yeah. all self tapes. Commercials is coming back to in-person. I see a lot of my friends posting and I'm like, yeah, call me too. No. Um, <laughs> but it's, mo it's mostly been self tapes and Zooms, which is why I had to like figure this out even, even harder uh, than we had it before. Um, like I bought this little microphone for Zoom auditions because uh, I use my DSLR camera yeah. for auditions and Zooms. I direction myself. Like, yeah, it's time. It's, you know what it's it the whole is. thing. You know, you kind of have a sense, I think. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to do it on my phone. I'm uh, done with uh, that. Like, real no. <laughs> Um. So I just think like, you belong. You're supposed to be there. Um, they called you in. It wasn't charity. It wasn't to fill some quota. It wasn't. I literally had a friend who's like my age, and they called him in for some character. And in the breakdown, it said it said that he had to be sixty. It was like a sixty year old dude. And so he calls his manager up, and he's like, "What is this? What is this?" And he goes, "Oh, the this casting director really just wanted to see you for something." And he's been wanting to call you in for something, but he can't, but he couldn't find anything. And this character fit you, maybe not the age. So it's really just so you can meet them and perform for them. So like, don't, don't, don't be like, uh, I'm trying to book this, but like, just do it. Just show them who you are. And you know, it, go, it goes to that whole, don't book the job, book the room. If you've heard that phrase. Yeah, for sure. That's part of booking the room. They called you in. They're just trying to get to know you. Um, and that whole party analogy that I almost forgot about until I just remembered it. And then- um, It sure takes the pressure off. Right? I You've like gone to a party where you like friends. didn't hang out with the person that invited you oh, almost yeah. the whole party. Oh yeah, I'm always making friends in the corner with random yeah. people, just like finding who's shy and talking to them. <laughs> they're easy to- Right? They're easy targets. <laughs> but it didn't make you feel, you weren't like, oh, I'm not hanging out with my friend and I don't really know anyone else what am I even doing here? Yeah. No, you were invited. Um, I like that. And then, um, I don't even know if I want to tell this story or not, because it's, it's from that same friend with the 60 year old audition. Cause it, it's, have to. okay. It's, it, it can, it can be useful in many ways, but it depends on how you take it. Okay. It was, it was a bad story for him but there's some lessons to gain from it just for the nebulous everyone else. Great. So he, he auditioned for this role and it was for like a baseball player who's a professional and, and is like a big dude and is Puerto Rican. Okay. And my friend is a big dude who's Puerto Rican and used to play semi-professional baseball. 
he had like three auditions. He got to like producers it was for a TV show. And then he didn't book it. And the reason they told him, they told him this. They said, you didn't book it because you were too much like the character breakdown. Which is exactly the face I made when he told me. I was like, what is, what? What does that even mean? Okay. And the, 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 it's like shitty. But the useful thing you can glean from that is if you're looking at this audition and think, I don't fit this thing at all. <laughs> it doesn't matter sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, you can be you can be the exact breakdown. And if they saw something they like in somebody else, they just they decided they changed their mind on what product they were buying. Yeah. Right. Have you seen that list that's like reason you didn't get the part? Mm-mm. So it's this big list. And once you get through it, you realize that it's kind of it's kind of like a joke. Okay. But it's real. It's reasons you didn't get the part. You were too tall. You were too short. You were too blonde. You weren't blonde enough. You're you're too white. You're not white enough. You're too, your hair is too curly. Your hair is too straight. You reminded the director of his ex-wife. You you were wearing the same shirt as your your the director's neighbor who he got in a fight with. Like all of the things that are out of your control, that are just who you are. <laughs> It's it, 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 like none of the things on that list were you missed your line up. Yeah. You, you, you looked at your script too much. Yeah. And it's like, and, yeah. You look at auditions, you know, that booked people roles on YouTube and whatnot. And I don't, I don't like pour over these, you know, I'm yeah. not like obsessive. Um, but every now and then I do, I do come across an audition from somebody rather well-known who maybe it was an early one for them though. Um, yeah. And they are breaking all of the rules that everybody tells us in class, don't do this, don't do that. You're going to get your audition thrown out. And I'm like, what's all that crap in the background? What is that? What is that? Like what he's shirtless. Like what? Like, are you talking about that, that stranger things one? That it, I did think of that one. Yeah. I love the audition though. And he yeah. had such Billy energy that I'm like, I see it. That audition got so like famous for how weird it was that there were casting directors posting saying like, hey, we all love that audition. It's great. Does that mean you need to play music in all of your auditions? No, that was the thing he did and it was great. Does that mean you needed this and that? No, it's like, don't just copy that thing because it became trendy. Right. And be like, ooh, I'm going to play music like the Stranger Things guy. Well, that one made sense because in that scene, he was, he, there was the music and then he was like turning it down or turning it up or whatever he was doing. You know, he made that choice and they always talk about making strong choices, you know, strong. But then there are people that take that and go, music is a strong choice. Got it. Strong, but wrong. (laughs) So, so I think like they wanted you, they saw, they saw your headshot. They saw your reel. And even if they didn't, they did. Right. (laughs) They called you in. And here's going back to like other random things. Like I, going back, we mentioned resume earlier, going back Mm -hmm. to resume. The reason I have some of the random information that I have on my resume is because of the concept of you never know who knows what and who's affiliated with what and who loves what. I was in my very first ever, because I haven't been doing this that long, my very first ever in-person audition. Uh, It was the callback. I did the self-tape. I actually wore this in the self-tape, come to think of it, because it was for a 1940s French Mm -hmm. uh, cafe person. And, um, you know, did the callback in person for a different role, wore something else. And I did the whole like rigmarole of like printing my headshot and like stapling it the way I was whatever supposed to and I handed it to them and they're looking at my resume and they saw where I went to grad school and they're like oh my gosh we love Scotland and then we had this whole conversation about that and you know and then it's like okay let's get back to the audition and you know regardless of that maybe I would have booked it anyway I would like to think I would have but um it couldn't have hurt yeah so I keep that stuff on because I'm like my resume it's my choice and it worked once 
So you never I know. call it being forthcoming. Yeah. Be, like, don't, like, if you have some weird piece of information or just something you want to say, say it. Like, don't just, don't just, ah, but like, I went to an audition once and I have my, like, I have inner informatics listed somewhere on my resume. Uh, and it's like my degree, but it doesn't have anything to do with acting really, but I have it on there. And I went to an audition for like a, I think it was like a NASA scientist or something. And they were like, they were like, so what's informatics? And I was like, oh boy, do I not know, but here's my approximation of it. And I booked that. And I don't know how much that helped or whatever, or like, because I was a NASA scientist and I had a technology degree, they were like, this is connected in some way. But it, you know, it just makes you a person. It makes you a person instead of someone auditioning. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the thing that's lost on, um, on self tapes. You can't really do that unless you throw it into your slate or something. Right. Which people have such strong opinions about slates anyways, and like tail slating and everything else. I just, you could recite all of Shakespeare and a slate will still be difficult. Yeah, it's true. Um, going off of that, I wonder what you think of this. I was at a virtual, like a group coaching meeting. Um, and it was a Q and a with a manager and she was saying that what she has her clients do who don't have a lot of footage already, or maybe any at all, but she agreed to represent them because she saw something in them. I know. <laughs> I told you we could talk forever about. Uh, uh, yeah, I ain't got nothing to do. But maybe one final thing. And I haven't done this, but I've kind of tossed around the idea of it just like for the sake of it, seeing how it comes out, which is making a personality reel in which you are a person, like whatever you call it, personality something, mm -hmm. where you're just like talking, being you. It's not st so stiff like a freaking slate, right? And you're not being anything else. You're just like maybe telling them things about you that nobody would know unless you actually told them, you know? And kind of like your description of yourself that you showed initially, like the breaking things. Like, oh, yeah, imagine yeah. if you went on for a 30 second to one minute clip and just like kind of in your most strongest max essence, just like told us those things, it would essentially be like that. But what do you do you with can, that? She submits it. She submits it. Like she, as part of her slate? as part of like, like along with the headshot, because that, oh, some of those people don't have reels. She does that in lieu of a reel. They book constantly. Huh. Because they see real people and they, they like that person and they get to know that person. And it's not, you know, it's along with the audition maybe, right. but it's just like, huh. It's just an interesting food for thought. Yeah. It's working for some people it's a yeah it's such a weird thing to me because like i figure they want the slate for some reason there's like some reason for the slate but when they just ask you for name location and, and, and height or whatever like what am i gonna do just go like hi my name is max color i'm six foot two i'm based in los angeles have you seen this thing about crocodiles lately like it feels so manufactured like i had a different audition the week ago where they said Slay your name and all that jazz. And then tell us something about how you connect to the theme of the movie. And so my slate was like three minutes long because I had stuff to say. I knew what I was supposed to talk about. But like, are you saying you want me to slate and be like, hi, my name is Max Cutler. And oh man, that Dodgers game yesterday was like, like, I, I don't really care about the Dodgers know. game, but like, when they don't ask for it, I figure they just want me to say my name and shit and like, just give us the thing we need it for something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think slating is is still slating. I think with that particular person, the personality reel is sort of like in lieu of a reel or like in addition to, to just give that person some yeah. tape, give them some real life person. Because if, we, if we're not in the room and we can't stand there and smile and look them in the eye and connect with them, be like, hey. Or be like, like, oh, you have the statue of the thing. 
Yeah, or like, you know, or let, I mean, like they say, let them start the conversation. Nobody's starting a conversation. So With self so tapes, yeah. removed. But um, Max, this has been absolutely fabulous. Zoom's going to kick us off again. This is oh, like okay. the third time. <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like the nitty gritty of everything that you went into has been so helpful. And I'm hoping that it's helpful for other people as well. Just for me, like, yes, all the branding stuff, but like the website stuff and your an analogy with the party it's like it's just like there's so much there so um hey if you're willing maybe i'll bring you back sometime and we can discuss other questions that might come up further on in our careers yeah if you're up for it because I feel i'm like, around i feel like we could talk shop forever so thank you so much i uh i'm really appreciative thanks for having me <laughs> One thing you forgot okay, quick resource that I forgot to say. When I did the headshots with um, Morgan Demeter after after getting Buckley Sampson, Sampson to help me with the wardrobe stuff, I used this program on Actors Access called uh, uh, Talent Link. That sounds familiar. You might have heard of it from someone else. It's like $35. And they just basically submit your profile along with other people's to casting directors. Hmm. And I got like 13 meetings out of it. Some people have more success than others. My headshots probably helped because it, it, like the way they see it, it's just like a sea of headshots. And if they click on it, it shows them the resume and everything else. Okay. So since I had headshots that like really popped it, um, you know, I guess people looked at it. And the, one of the best things I learned from that session of, of things is as actors, we put agents on a pedestal a little bit. We're like, we want you to take us, but they're technically our employee, if you think about it. Yeah. We they don't get paid unless we do. Right. So we have to help them help. Yeah. Them, right. And about half of those meetings I went on were like awful. They were like, just they like they weren't nightmares, but I was just like, wait a minute. This is just a person trying to have a business hmm. and so it, it gave me a bit of an ego boost because i was like you know you go into an agent meeting and you're like here's my stuff please 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 take me please mm -hmm. where i was going in like i have a thing to give they have a thing they might want here it is and we're more it, it made me feel like more equals rather like than taking agency in your career having that branding aspect even just you know, having a plan. I mean, I got that boost from working with my coach. Like we have a plan and I know she's yeah. got my back and having that agency of your taking agency of your own career and saying, I have something to give and I am my product and here it is. And if you like it, then great. And if I'm not for you, fine, it's not going to kill my. Yeah. Awesome. But it, but it was like the first time I went to a meeting and I was like, I don't want you <laughs> like me well, I, I get to say that also taking the power this like sort of not completely fictitious but maybe unhealthy power perception dynamic perspective, dynamic away yeah dynamic's a good word away from these gatekeepers right yeah so you know it's all about that relationship and not lowering yourself just to be accepted it's like if I want you and you want me too, it's like a relationship with a person. Exactly. So we are going to get kicked off in one minute and 13 seconds. <laughs> All right, Max. This has been absolutely fabulous. I, just I had fun. You and I can't wait to talk to you next time. Please keep in touch. And yes. um, I'm probably going to email you with like tech questions at some point. So yeah. look for me. And let me know how she found me. I will do. I will do. I will. All right. Have a right. wonderful day, Max. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye.